How dare you? Let's go on here. What are we doing here for a SmackDown? No, we're doing Extreme Rules. That's why everyone's listening. All right. (laughs) Extreme Rules. First of all, I did not take notes on it, but uh, as Craig and I were driving up here, I watched the WLC match on my phone. I was driving, by the way. Craig was driving. That's an important note. Yes. (laughs) We plugged the audio into his truck stereo so we could both hear it, and I watched the match. And uh, this would have been the second best match in the show until the main event, so it was the third best match in the show. It was a very fun match, all kinds of wacky comedy, all kinds of violence. I hope Drew McIntyre is okay. He threw himself over the top rope through a table, and uh, Torito ended up winning, and the fans went nuts for it, and, he, and it was a great fight and great comedy and great spectacle all in one. Giant thumbs up for that. I was doing Observer Live, so I couldn't hear the commentary, but I did watch and do commentary for this match, so if you guys want to go up later and download Observer Live, you can sync it up and... Here's Semper Vivi and I do play-by-play, as we took calls on completely unrelated subjects, by the way, which is always fun. This match was awesome. They did show some clips later on in the show, and a spot that just tickled me to death was uh, Hornswoggle holding on to Torito's tail and uh, chasing him around while holding on to his tail. So Torito ducked between Jinder's legs, and uh, Hornswoggle bonked him right in the uh, ding-ding. This tickled you to death? I was... Amused. This tickled Craig to death, everybody. That's so sweet. Well, this was about, let's talk about some real violence, not this tickling bullshit. This was the most violent, aside from the fire in the main event, if there had not been fire, this would have been the most violent match on the show. Yes. By far. This is the most violent TLC match I've seen in some time. <laughs> it was way more violent than, than John Cena and Randy Orton in uh, whatever it was, December. These guys, they, they fell off ladders. The fell onto ladders? El Torito did a, a big flying high cross, and a whole pile of men fell through wood and metal. Just, just unrepentant violence. And finally, after all of this craziness, Torito just did a springboard uh, senton, I guess it would be. Sure. And, and sat on Hornswoggle and pinned him. He went through a table as well. I thought this match was excellent. This is tremendous. Sold out monitor backstage, I was told. Everybody was excited for this match more than anything else on the show, as they should have been, as I was as well. Mm-hmm. And and it very much paid off. So if you've not seen We LC, I recommend you uh, go up there and check it out. As Damian Sandow noted on Twitter, there's a direct quote, that pre-show, wow. Yes. <laughs> Everything was little. They had a little announce desk. They yeah, had- they had a little announce desk. The... the- the uh, little announced crew of Micro Cole, Jerry Smaller, and JB Elf, who fittingly was very tall compared to the people who was working with. The little Michael Cole looked like mini Paul Bearer. It was funny because they didn't actually look anything like the men they were imitating. They were just short and had joke names. I do like Jerry Smaller, but I think I would have done Barely Lawler. There was a mini referee, a mini ring announcer who was really pretty bad at that job but uh, what are you gonna do but uh, all in all enormous success and the main show really all right come on was it that bad rvd versus jack swagger versus cesaro your basic three-way elimination match they were lots of three-way spots lots of guys getting in each other's way cesaro hit uh the giant swing on swagger and rvd broke it up with a kick to the face and people booed rvd and then uh Finished the first fall was Cesaro hitting the deadlift superplex on Swagger, because Cesaro is a freak. And then RVD hitting the frog splash on Swagger and pinning him. The announcers all forgot it was an elimination match and said the ref had made a mistake. No one knew what was going on, and then no, just Swagger's out, and the other two kept fighting. And uh, it was every Rob Van Dam match he ever saw from that point on. And finally, he went for the frog splash with a trash can across Cesaro's chest. Cesaro rolled out of the way, but pulled the trash can in the way, and then followed with a neutralizer on the trash can for the win. A decent little garbage wrestling opener. It was fine. It was an extreme rules style match. Swagger, uh, this was the finish, but the announcers were just out to lunch. They, at the beginning of the match, announced it was a one fall match, even though everybody in the world, and Ed, by the way, Craig, your your co host Ed mm-hmm. is an idiot. Yes, who is incapable <laughs> well, of reading or listening or spelling. The everyone in the world apparently was aware that this was an elimination match, except for three people, Michael Cole, Jerry Lawler and JBL, who were absolutely baffled when Jack Swagger got pinned. 
And then it was alerted to them, or it was, uh, I, I guess they were alerted that, hey, it's a, it's a, it's an elimination match, fellas, so relax. So they went out to the rest of the thing, and it was fine. Cesaro got his big win. Not really anything else to say about it. I had no problem with it. I didn't like, I didn't, I, excuse me. I'll, uh, excuse I'll start, me, Craig. I'll start again. <laughs> Did we surprise you by doing the show? Yes. I didn't mind this match at all. I thought it was a uh, pretty good, pretty good opener. And uh, Cesaro just, Never ceases to amaze me with his uh, impressive uh, moves and strength. At one point, he hit RVD with rolling gut wrench suplexes. Yes. He's very strong. Uh, he, just a freak. And uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this match. I thought it was a pretty good opener. This person here, Vinny, says, do you remember RVD in TNA? He looked 10 times better here. I guess I don't. Oh, God. He was horrible in, in TNA there at the end. All right. Everybody who goes to TNA just does nothing there. I realize that. Uh, unless they become a wasp. <laughs> then they have fun. The doctors were checking on Daniel Bryan backstage. Stephanie arrived. She advised him for his own safety to forfeit the match tonight and hand the title over to Kane. Bryan, of course, refused, and he vowed to retain his title. And Steph said he was going to be Kane's bitch. Wow. Stephanie made no appearance whatsoever in the main event on this show. Bo Dallas hype video. I will admit, this was great. Especially the shot of like two dozen people all giving a giant thumbs up. That was great. Alexander Rusev versus Truth and Xavier Woods. First of all, Lana, uh, Lana dedicated the match to Vladimir Putin. They put his picture on the screen. The crowd chanted USA. I thought it was in 1982 for a while. Rusev took out Woods before the match, so it turned out to just be a one-on-one -on -one match anyway. We've seen many of these. Truth hit more offense than anyone has against Rusev so far. It was fine. And then Rusev, uh, he tried the pay dirt. Rusev caught him with one arm and slammed, uh, and slammed him down. And then shortly thereafter, he won with the camel clutch. Camel clutch. <laughs> I not, like the camel clutch. I'm not doing it for myself here. No, you're not. And, uh, your rage is, is, uh, is affecting your performance here. Lana ordered... Rusev to kill Woods afterwards, and he hit him with a fallaway slam on the floor. It was probably Rusev's best match yet. That is not saying much. What was she yelling at Rusev, get Woods? I hope not. Huh. I believe she just said Rusev crush. Yeah. I don't know why they spent all of this time and effort putting together a handicap match if the whole idea was they were just going to injure one guy before the match and it would be a singles match. Right. Haven't we seen them have singles matches? Wasn't the whole point... They did wrestle each of them in a singles match. And boy, wait till we get out of the SmackDown review when I talk about this Rusev deal on SmackDown. I believe I've now seen Rusev versus some kind of combination of Truth and Woods more than I have seen Cena versus Orton. That's not impossible. They've wrestled a lot. Impossible. But the point is, I had to watch Rusev face each of these guys individually like a thousand times to set up a two-on-one match, at which point they didn't even give me the two-on-one match. I got a one-on-one -on -one match. Not that I care. I don't care. But... To be fair, come on! <laughs> that was the most passionate, apathetic so, rant ever. So you're outraged? I'm, mark? I'm just bamboozled. How about that? All right. That's I'm a, bamboozled. It's a great word. Here you go. This is like the stupidest... No, I'm going to go off on this a little Here bit more. Go. This is the stupidest example. I mean, it's not really false advertising, okay? But if any fucking person in the entire world actually cared about this two-on-one match, give me one goddamn good reason why they couldn't do the two-on-one match. He faced one guy, and his partner ran in for the DQ on Raw. Am I correct? Yeah. Then he faced the other guy, and his buddy ran in for the DQ on SmackDown. Am I correct? Right. Am I correct that they were two different matches? Because I'm not even positive. We think all so. think it was two yes. different matches. It may have been a replay like all those times Lana brought him out on television, which you cannot tell me in hindsight were all live every time. They were replays. They had to be. So after going through all that trouble, if you were the one guy that was like, God damn, I can't wait to see Truth and his partner, Creed... What's his name? Woods. Woods. I cannot wait to see these two guys get their hands on Alexander Rusev. And you were all excited for the pay-per-view, and then they didn't even do it. For no good reason. <laughs> Why? I mean, I presume they'll do it on Raw tomorrow. Oh, God. Why, Why not? I thought of that. 
By the way, we Lana, just gained 200 listeners in the middle of my rant. I swear to God, I'm not making that up. By the way, Lana was wearing a blue dress this evening, and I approve. I do like her. Yeah. She was the highlight of the segment. Absolutely. I think we can all agree on that. Yes, we can all agree on that. Evolution cut a promo backstage featuring their horrible new t shirt. If you've ever seen the dancing skeletons out of Silly Symphonies, imagine those skeletons dressed up like Evolution for Halloween. When I saw people on Twitter trying to defend this shirt, <laughs> no, it was another one of those why? days where I was like, this is why this is the best job in the world. Because there nothing I could do, nothing I could say, nothing I could I could I could provide to my listeners would ever drive every single one of them off. It's impossible. They love wrestling so much that nothing can stop them. They liked this shirt. How? It I'm was not sure. three skeletons. I think they were in coffins. Dave as Batista well. looked so embarrassed to be in this. You know how Dave Batista dresses. Douchebag. He was wearing, he had to wear this shirt. No wonder he left after this show. <laughs> I'm on a tear right now. I'll tell you. Dave, by the way, looks homeless tonight. You're not shaved. He lost Why would razor. he shave if he knew he had to wear this shirt? <laughs> I guess I had Why bother? Why try? Wade Barrett versus Big E. He didn't talk about this promo. I didn't really have anything to say. They, it's, yeah. it's, it's, we're, 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 we have giant egos. We've conquered the world. We're badasses. We're going to win. Did a fist bump. Yeah. Poor Renee. So Wade Barrett versus Big E. Wade's bad news. Usually it's something like, you're all going to drink too much, and then you're all get fired. Or you make a fool out of yourself, and your family will be embarrassed of you. His bad news tonight was, and I'm not making this up, soon the United States will be wiped out by a pandemic virus. We're all going to die. <laughs> some bad news. That, that, that sucks. Is, that is undoubtedly bad news. So, as we'll discuss when we get to SmackDown, there has been a deliberate attempt by this company to bury Biggie deep beneath the earth and make sure no one cheers him. Meanwhile, for reasons I can't fathom, people love the Bad News Barrett gimmick, and now they cheer Wade like never before. So they loved Wade, they hated Big E, and the match was still booked with Big E as the babyface and Wade as the heel. So Wade did some offense, nobody cared. E made his comeback, there was mild, soft, gentle booing. So went off way too long, E kicked out of Wasteland, and then Wade avoided a big ending. Big E avoided one bull hammer, but then Wade hit a second one and he won. Title change needed to happen, but that match was a failure. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Was it really any worse than any other Big E match that I've had to watch over the last month as they've decided to just absolutely kill him before taking been, the belt off him? It may have been better, at least this time, if somebody won. There was a terrifying spot where Big E had tossed Wade out onto the apron, and as Wade stood up on the outside of the ropes, Big E did a shoulder block to him through the ropes and to the floor and they splatted and I thought everybody died. Uh, thankfully, uh, nobody did. And uh, there's, this was match was, uh, it was okay as well. I liked this little battle right here. I thought it was fine. I didn't think it was a really? great match. I didn't think it was a bad match. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, What's wrong right. with it? It was bad and boring. The crowd did hate it, but... They uh, loved Wade. They loved Wade Barrett. They went crazy for him. They booed Biggie. When he came out... And Biggie then when he did, won, in between, they made no noise. That was pretty much the story of the entire show. Well, that is true. I didn't mind this match. I, I, I didn't fine. mind it either, Craig. Give yeah. me a high five. All right. That's right. <laughs> Friends. We're the new evolution, Vinny. So adapt or fucking perish, dude. I'll, I'll be the fat one. <laughs> How noble. Like we were going to try to decide well, between the two of us which of us would be fat. We could have drawn straws, I guess. I don't even know where this is going now. No, no, go ahead. The good news is evolution, then wrestle the shield. Yeah, how can you hate this show with this match? This match was awesome. It did take a little bit of a while to get going. For a while, it was just kind of your average six-man, which is not a terrible thing, but just the heels getting the heat in the guy, beating him up, and then a brief comeback, and then he cut that guy off, work him over for a while. And then finally, it came down to a, or started uh, with a Roman Reigns hot tag. He made a great comeback, and soon bodies were flying all over the place. Everyone was brawling everywhere. Everyone was hitting finishers, and... Uh, Reigns kicked out of a pedigree and an RKO, or at least he got hit with them, and then guys broke up the pin. 
Shield was flying everywhere, being a great team. Strength in numbers. Inter- I don't mean to interrupt, but very, just very quickly, if anyone is listening it to this and the WWE post show, can you please let me know if our show is more exciting? Because I just <laughs> looked over, and it literally looks like all four of them are about to fall asleep. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, hundreds of big moves. Hunter, Orton, Ambrose, and Rollins brawled way up into the stands. And uh, upstairs and then downstairs and Rollins disappeared and I can see where this is going and show enough he did a new jack dive off a balcony onto the pile wiped them all out and uh, the whole time that had been going on Batista and Roman Reigns have been peacefully laying in the ring and suddenly they sprung to life and Dave hit a spine buster he went for the power bomb but Romans escaped that hit the Superman punch and then the big spear for the win great match great 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 pro wrestling match yep. The, uh, the the Shield as a unit got put over terribly strong, all three of them, and Roman Reigns most of all. Just excellent pro wrestling here. Batista is apparently on his way out. He got pinned clean in the middle here by, by Roman Reigns. They Batista is not booked on anything, and he has not been booked on anything after tonight for a while now. But they were going to try to see, can we get Batista to stick around for one more month and and he'll put over Daniel Bryan at the next pay-per-view, and then he can go on his merry way. And Batista apparently put his foot down after uh, doing the job to Bryan at WrestleMania, not wanting to do it yet again. So they apparently went back and forth all day, and at the end of the day, Batista put over Reigns, and he's out of here for a while. So, I don't know, I guess Daniel Bryan and Kane have to wrestle again, uh, or we'll find out tomorrow what they do. But for a guy who's on his way out, Batista put this dude over clean as a sheet, it was a uh, it was a great little match. Seth Rollins in that tope where he fucking Ugh. went headfirst into the dasher boards. I have absolutely no idea how he got up. That was ten times scarier than the balcony dive. And at least there he had three guys catching him. The only guy had catching him on the tope was the board. Yes. He went headfirst <laughs> into a board. Hunter was there to step out of the way. Hunter did kind of get out of the way. So uh, He saved himself. It's funny because Hunter was selling the most of anybody and it appeared he was the only guy that didn't get hit. So, this was an exceptional match. If you've got the WWE Network and you've decided, I don't want to watch Extreme Rules, at least do yourself a favor and go watch Evolution versus The Shield. It is a classic, it is a classic, old school, three tough veterans against three young guys who don't give a shit and are out of their minds. That's what this was. <laughs> yes, yes, they it are. It was great. This was like a, uh, this was like, I know, I know some people... Don't want to hear this comparison, but these these shield baby faces are like Von Eriks. You know what I mean? They're just great, crazy, young, out of their minds baby faces that just fight like crazy against whoever these these old heels are. It was awesome. I like how you called this an old school match. This old school match had crowd brawling and a balcony dive. Great. Oh, crowd brawling is certainly old it's school. Old school. <laughs> What, do you think there weren't crowds prior to, okay. uh, to the year 2000? That, okay, that's I fair. think the there Sheik are brawled through some crowds once in a while. This was a tremendous match. Four stars easily. It was just absolutely awesome. Go back and watch it. Um, what else can be said? Yeah, I went, awesome. I, I went four, and looking back, that needs to be higher. It was better than that. Put it up higher, Vinny. I will have put it up higher. Meanwhile, I got a couple of uh, notes here from the Twitter machine. I don't know why I found this so funny, but this fella here says, whoever designed the shirt for Evolution needs to be fed cod liver oil. Wow. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but... That is an old school threat. That is an old school threat. And then a bunch of stuff like, the real bad news for Barrett is winning the Intercontinental title. That may very well be true. So there you go. And this guy here. The Brian and Vinny and Craig show is much better than the network's post show, and it isn't even close. Thanks, Chris. Cool. Thank you, Chris. Well, I have sad news. <laughs> it is time. Not, not bad news, but sad news. Yes. We must now discuss Bray Wyatt and John Cena. What a shocker. This match sucked. I warned everybody. Mm-hmm. False advertising going in. The end of the world. You know what pissed me off about this match? Everything. I could... Where to where even start? This was like a TNA match. Yeah. It's like... So, the Wyatt clan... The story of the match was that John Cena kept trying to climb out. Because God knows he can't fucking pin this guy like he did a month ago. He's got to escape the cage as his only chance of winning. So, he keeps, like a goddamn idiot, trying to climb over the cage while the Wyatts are attempting to prevent him from doing so. Where are John Cena's friends? Well, apparently everyone in the locker room hates John Cena as much as all the dudes in the audience. 
Because not one single guy in 20 minutes came out to help even the odds. He was just a man all by himself. He's trying to climb over the cage. They won't let him. And then it's kind of like, well, why don't you idiots just get in the fucking cage and three-on-one this guy? Why do you stop him from climbing out and then wait outside? It's just over and over. The guy tries to climb over, they prevent him. They tries to climb over, they prevent him. Over and over and over again. For like 20 fucking minutes. Meanwhile, we're supposed to believe, I guess, that if Bray Wyatt escapes his cage by the skin of his teeth, the world's going to end. Which, last time I checked, it's 819 right now. The world hasn't ended yet. So, blatant fucking false advertising. And then you've got the little kid from some NFL commercial who comes out. And and he's the guy that is... He scares John Cena. A kid... A kid with a fucked up mic with too much low end. John Cena's too scared to just walk past him. That was not my child, by the way. Your kid's much bigger than that. <laughs> now, I hope you're all happy about that segment on Monday. How non-contrived it was. Okay. I'm sure you loved this as well. <laughs> What were the rest of, why didn't he bring all the kids out? Now he's got a kid with a weird voice. Bunch of little urchins. Oh, come on. Sliming the cage. Okay. <laughs> I thought the finish, I mean, it's at least the end of the match. The, the, to say, <laughs> That's the only good thing about it. <laughs> to say. At least it ended the match. Listen, this, if it had been a clean pinfall at the end, it still would have been a goddamn horrible match. No, you know what? This is a terrible wrestling match that then had a bizarre finish. I won't even... Hey, listen. We were jumping ahead, but I'll just jump ahead anyway. You're right. There wasn't a clean pinfall at the finish. Because John Cena gets scared by an infant. He goes back <laughs> into the ring. Bray hits his finishing maneuver on John Cena. But God forbid, in 2014, we let somebody pin John Cena. Bray can't even pin the guy. He's got to walk out of the cage. He's got to flee from John Cena to win. Just knocked my headphones out again. Pissed off. So, yeah. Hit it, phones. It was freaking terrible. It was boring. Mm -hmm. It was completely illogical. It went too goddamn long. Had a goofy finish. Yeah. It sucked. Well, tell us more about it. I don't know. It was just boring. It made Cena look like an idiot. Stall for time. Brian's trying to fix his headphones. I see. And like I say, I hated this match, and apparently everyone else in the universe hated it more than I did. I thought this was maybe the worst match in the show. Maybe? I thought Big E and Wade was just as bad. Oh, Vinny. But at least, you know what? I take it back. That did have that's, a better finish. That's not fair. That match was also terrible. Okay. Bray Wyatt and John Cena had a horrible match. Yeah. Wade Barrett and Big E had a horrible match. If you want to argue one's better than the other, fine. Apparently, there is there is one cat on Twitter that said we're way overreacting. And oh, this, who this, said that? This guy JJ on Twitter. We're overreacting. That's what he said. Maybe, maybe JJ should look on Twitter and find out if maybe he's underreacting. Yeah, he, hmm. I, I mentioned this before. I went to our board, and people first started to agree with me, and then they, I, I was apparently, I, I like this more than most people. There were I saw a lot of negative star reviews. Negative three, negative five, negative four. I like the guy that gave it negative three and a half. It wasn't <laughs> it wasn't minus four, but it was it was worse than minus three. It was exactly minus three and a half stars. That was an exceptional rating. People saying things like I've hated this more than I've ever hated anything else in wrestling. Well, let's not go that far. I like the one guy that said this is Dungeon of Doom level bad. Yeah. Fuck that match. <laughs> That about covers it. Paige versus Tamina. Actually, before this, they showed highlights of the WLC match, and at this point, that was the second best match on the show. Truth. Paige versus Tamina. First, we had Paige playing keep away for a while. Tamina finally caught her. I didn't realize this, but Tamina is like thirty six. Yeah, she's very old. She's been wrestling for a for a for a female wrestler, yes, well, for any wrestler. But uh, I don't know how long she's been doing this, but her offense was like. All body slammer. And yeah. then all body slammer. <laughs> well, you know, if you now find... Now all body slammer. Hey, you get a move that works when you need another move I for. suppose that's true. Keep doing it until it stops working? Yeah. All right. So Paige tried to run off the apron. Tamina blocked it, swung her into the barricade. Nate went up to top, and Tamina tried a Super Samoan drop. Paige turned it into a powerbomb. She made a cover. 
Tamina kicked out. The ref counted to three anyway. The fucking ref. <laughs> Announcers were burying him as having a strange cadence. Tamina hit a spitting body slam for a near fall. And then she tried a super kick, but Paige caught it, caught it, caught the foot, and turned it into the modified Scorpion crosslock for the win. This was better than John Cena and Bray Wyatt. Oh yeah? Yes. It still wasn't very good though. No. <laughs> it was worse than It was fine. They tried. The crowd didn't care, but they were put in the we're going to kill you slot. Right. And uh and yeah. And then we got hey, more Bray. Bray came back. So we mentioned earlier, little uh, the kid's name is Little Johnny, by the way. Little Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, earlier, he'd been singing into a microphone that, as you noted, had like a, what, what did you say, the, the bass was too high? The low end was turned up a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So he had no microphone here, but when he spoke, his voice came out the same. Oops. Something is terribly wrong with this young man. Well, at first, the funny part was when he first started talking, it was his real voice. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it got fucked up. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so you're just like my headphones. You just got to just hit the mic a couple times. It'll start working. That's how you fix things in radio. You <laughs> no. hit them until they work, or you twist them. That one also the works other. in cars, by the way. And wrestling. <laughs> all right, yes. You can't work, I'll hit you harder. Yeah. Daniel Bryan versus Kane in the main event. By the way, did you notice that Bray Wyatt claimed... This was not one of Bray... Remember I was talking about how sometimes Bray Wyatt has great promos, and sometimes he just says a lot of words, and sure. it, he just has good delivery, but the promo itself sucks. SmackDown promo on Friday, I thought was an excellent promo. Mm -hmm. This promo was lame. Especially since he said, I believe this was an exact quote, John Cena stands alone with the vanquished. Wait a minute. How's that possible? <laughs> How can you stand alone with the vanquished? Maybe it was just him. Then you're not alone. Maybe it was just him that was vanquished. No, then he would have said, John Cena stands alone, the vanquished. He said, with the vanquished. Mm. That's a group. That sure. ain't alone. That should be a faction. The vanquished. The vanquished. <laughs> Bray Wyatt needs an editor is what he needs. Can we get like, I'm sure in his cult, he, I heard he's got a giant cult full of children and adults. There's got to be an editor there. Can not someone look over his promos and make sure that they're factually correct? Let's go on. Main event was Daniel Bryan versus Kane. <laughs> I'm happy to report that here in this death match built around potential career ending injuries and putting your hands on my wife and all that, they did not begin with a lockup. Daniel Bryan came out first, and then when King came out, Bryan went charging up the aisle to fight with this fucker. And then cut beat up. Well, it didn't work out too well, but he tried. <laughs> he used all sorts of plunder, a lot of chairs, a lot of canes. They prepped both announce desks, but didn't use them for a while. They brawled backstage. They brawled through the gorilla area. They brawled in the parking lot. Craig pointed out, hey, there's a 1980s Ford Taurus over there. Sure enough, soon the car was destroyed. They got slammed on it. They threw things through windows. They punched through windows. Then Brian got a hold of a tire iron. He beat the holy bejesus out of Kane with this tire iron. And Kane was rendered unconscious. But even though this was, this was an extreme rules match, it was not a falls count anywhere extreme rules match. So then the pay-per-view main event turned into Slam City. Brian laid Kane on a pallet. He got in a forklift. No he license, by the way. Started the engine. Uh, our own Redunbeck apparently is uh, used to forklifts. He had a long critique on Twitter of Brian's improper forklift technique. OSHA is pissed. <laughs> OSHA, OSHA is going to have a field day with this. Wow. So, you know, see, uh, stream died. Stream on the network has apparently died. Seamus is very confused about his stream being dead. I'm completely astonished. I had absolutely zero problems. Yeah. Zero problems on awesome. Apple TV until the post show. That's good. Huh. Anyway. So he drove a uh, forklift back through the parking lot, back through the backstage area, down to the ring, down to ringside. He lifted Kane high up into the air. He tilted the little lever thing forward a bit, and it didn't go all the way, so Kane had to roll himself down. And the payoff for all this was Kane rolling himself down a pallet and landing on his feet in the ring and collapsing. Yeah. That was goofy. And then <laughs> Brian climbed to the top of the pallet and the crowd completely forgave all the silliness and they just wanted to see Daniel Bryan wrestle and win. <laughs> and they started chanting, yes, yes, yes. They went absolutely nuts. This was proof to me they can do no wrong with Daniel Bryan right now. He had a giant headbutt off the uh, forklift. King kicked out of that. Started hitting all the big moves. Brian got him in the yes lock. Kane tried to fight free with the cane. 
fittingly enough. And then Brian grabbed the cane and pulled it across Kane's face. And don't blame me for making this confusing. That's what happened. Uh, the announcers did not notice this, but that was the finish to the street fight Brian had with Randy Orton a few, a few years back. So Kane dragged his way free, and he managed to get uh, Brian through the announce desk with a choke slam. And then he pulled out, pulled out a table, and he pulled out the gas can. He lit the table ablaze. When he did a choke slam off the apron through the flaming table, Brian kicked him off. Kane went through the flaming table. Anonymous security guy ran over and doused him with a fire extinguisher. Kane recovered, rolled inside. Brian immediately hit the knee plus for the win. Good main event match on the whole. And then Brian's going up the ramp, celebrating with his belts. And then Kane sits up and sits off his pyro because they are going to do a rematch. Oh, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Probably on Raw. The uh, A couple things about this match. First off, the issue with the match to me, the match was fine. But you're only going to get so good of a match out of Kane. And the fans, they didn't care about the middle portion of the match. Because again, it's Daniel Bryan versus Kane. I don't want to say I told you so. But I argued immediately after WrestleMania, why is Daniel Bryan's first feud with Kane? Kane debuted in 1997. Yes. It is 2014. As a complete aside, I had to... Uh, we drove up to the uh, island yesterday, and and uh, long story short, we had to do it in a, a van because we had to uh, move some stuff. And this van was it was a 1995 something or other. Okay, this thing looked like it was made of wood. That's how old it was. Okay, it's two years older than Kane as far as his wrestling debut. 1997. Some of you that are like me, my age, and Craig's age, and Vinny's age, you have all these fond memories of 1997. Guess what? 1997 was a long fucking time ago. <laughs> so why Daniel Bryan's first big feud is with Kane? If you're wondering why it didn't get over, like maybe somebody else, maybe it was because it was with Kane. Same person here asking, is it me or is WWE doing Paige no favors? Again, I don't want to say I told you so, but why would Paige's first feud be with Tamina? What do you expect? I realize she was in the dead zone here on the pay-per-view, but it's Tamina. It's no one's going to care. No matter where you put it on the card, nobody's going to care, and it's not going to be very good. Which is not a very good way to get Paige over right after her big debut and championship win. So yes, neither of these things worked out. Kane trying to kill everybody by throwing a monitor into a, a bucket of water, which was astonishing because he throws Daniel Bryan into the water, and maybe it's because I don't like water, but from that point on, all I could look at was the bucket of water. How could Kane not see there's a bucket of water that he's throwing a TV into? He nearly killed everybody with this. I don't know. It wasn't a bad match, but it, it Daniel Bryan's first post-WrestleMania pay-per-view main event should have been like a match that he could steal the show with. And he ain't going to steal well, the show with a match with Kane. <laughs> he almost came very close. <laughs> yeah, per low standards for the rest of the show. There was one match better than this on the show. I didn't have a problem with this match either. I guess my biggest complaint about the pay-per-view is there was no closure on anything. It used to be where, you know, you'd watch Monday Night Raw and it would build to the uh, pay-per-view. And then when the pay-per-view matches were over, then things would get settled. We got... That's not true. Mostly. Sometimes. But it just... It's it's like we got no closure in the Cena-Wyatt match. We got no closure in the Brian and Kane match. It just, it's, it's like we watched an extended episode of Raw and not a very good one either. I didn't think it was that bad. I, I didn't think it was horrible. It was. The front part. The it was. The front a, part was very good and then it dropped off a cliff dramatically. Maybe it's because I only paid nine ninety nine for the network this month. That is month. true. That is yeah. true. And let me tell you something, everybody. I don't care what you say about this show or anything else. The WWE Network is awesome. Flawless. On my Apple TV, I did a I did a Twitter poll at the beginning of the show, and there were some people that had problems, but I don't think one single person who had an Apple TV had a problem. I'm not making any money from Apple, but let me tell you, Apple TV is awesome. It looks great up here, except for that one glitch. Not a single glitch during the pay-per-view. I watched the pre-show during Observer Live. Looked awesome. Whole thing was flawless. Looked great. Sounded great. As good as a normal pay-per-view. And aside from my nine ninety nine, I didn't pay a goddamn thing for it. So I have very few complaints overall about about everything. 
Truth. I mean, come on. I, I If I would have paid 60 bucks for this, maybe I'd be on a, on a complete tear right now. All right. But at the end of the day, it was nine ninety nine. What's What's the big deal? It was fine. It wasn't it's sacrifice. It wasn't sacrifice. <laughs> um, hang on. Well, shield. Obviously, the shield match was better than anything on sacrifice. Brian and Kane was probably better than anything on sacrifice. But other than that, that show was probably better than this one. Craig, did you watch Sacrifice? I'm gonna have to go back. And no, look at this thing. Why? W- I don't know. It's your job. No, it's not. I didn't have to review it for this show, so therefore I did not. Rusev watch it. was lousy. Biggie and Wade was lousy. Cena and Bray was very lousy. <laughs> so the problem, Paige Vinny, Smith was is lousy. Your, your negative review of some of these fine matches. <laughs> lousy? Come on. It's fine. There was, let's go watch them again. Let's go watch that Rusev match for the 400th time. Let's not get crazy now. My goodness. I can put it on right now. I got the network. I'm too intrigued by the Zeb Coulter and <laughs> Jack Swagger question. press conference. What could they possibly have to say? Yeah, I don't Jack, want to. where uh, does your career go from here? When did Macklemore lose his hair to Jack Swagger? I don't, I don't know. Jack Swagger sporting a Macklemore haircut. Wow, Craig, what a what a <laughs> cutting. Could have bought that at a thrift shop. Why don't we do SmackDown here? I am so hot and sweating right now, it's not even funny. Yeah, it's warm in here. All right, I'm moving on to SmackDown now. <clears throat> yeah, we're going yeah. backwards in time, everybody. Yeah. The first four minutes was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, nothing but recaps of the show. 